welcome to Golden Gate Park, an A to Z adventure! Live! My name is Marta Lindsay, and I'm the author of Golden Gate Park, an A to Z adventure. And my name is Michael Wirtz, and I'm the illustrator of Golden Gate Park, an A to Z adventure. And I'm Monarch, the grizzly bear. I used to live in Golden Gate Park, and you'll learn more about me later. But right now, I'm going to help with the thank yous. Got to be polite, you know. So, thank you to... Phil Ginsberg from SF Rec and Park, who's going to say hi in just a minute. And thank you to... Everyone at SF Rec and Park and the San Francisco Parks Alliance, who are helping all of us celebrate Golden Gate Park's 150th online and all year. I would especially like to thank the people who take care of the park and make it so nice for the animals. That's right, Monarch, and they make it so nice for us humans, too. Golden Gate Park is more important than ever right now. It's true. I've been going there every day during shelter in place, and it always makes me feel better. Oh, and thank you, too. Everyone at West Margin Press who worked so hard to make this book happen. Special thanks to Jennifer, Rachel, and Angie. Speaking of the book, Michael, you make me look very handsome in it. Thank you. You're welcome, Monarch. Oh, Monarch, there's one more. Oh, and thank you to... To all of you for joining us for this A to Z adventure today. We have lots of fun coming your way in the next hour and some surprises and news you won't want to miss at the end of the hour. Let's start this at Ginsburg. Hi everybody, my name is Phil Ginsburg. I'm the general manager of San Francisco's Recreation and Park Department, which means I get to be in charge of all kinds of fun stuff like uh, soccer fields and playgrounds and wild spaces where plants and animals live. I'm here with you today because we're celebrating Golden Gate Park's 150th birthday. Behind me is the Mother's Meadow Playground. It's one of six playgrounds in Golden Gate Park, including the Corette Children's Playground, which goes all the way back to 1887 and is the oldest playground in the United States. We're so happy that you're joining us today because parks are so important and they're so fun. And because it's Golden Gate Park's sesquicentennial, it's 150th birthday. And I am so thrilled that a couple people have written this amazing book, Golden Gate Park, an A to Z adventure. And in it are all kinds of really, really cool stories. For example, did you know that before some of the playgrounds in Golden Gate Park, there were emus and llamas and even a bear? There's all kinds of amazing history in this book, Golden Gate Park, an A to Z adventure. And so we're so happy that you're joining us today for music and really fun information about Golden Gate Park. Enjoy. I've lived just a block from Golden Gate Park for 12 years, and I go to the park almost every day. So do my kids. We've explored almost every inch of it, and there are just so many things that make it incredible. And that's what inspired me to write the book. But as I was writing the book, the question that I kept asking was, what are the things that are really unique about Golden Gate Park? That's what I wanted to put in the book. I wanted to pick something for each letter of the alphabet that's really special and fun. So. Let's start our adventure. See what you think. Golden Gate Park, an A to Z adventure. A is for artist Ruth Asawa. Paintings hang on walls. Sculptures sit on pedestals. But Ruth Asawa's most famous artwork hangs from the ceiling. You'll find 15 of her wire creations in the de Young Museum, along with lots more awesome art. Here's a picture of Ruth. Japanese American artist Ruth Asawa lived in San Francisco, and her sculptures can be found all around the city. Ruth Asawa was an amazing person, and you're going to hear a little bit more about her later on in a special song. But one reason Ruth was so amazing is because she was an activist. and She believed that all kids should be able to do art in school. 
he helped found the first public art high school in San Francisco. Pretty cool. Stamps of her baskets are coming out this August. Now, you can find her sculptures on the way to the elevators in the De Young. Uh, and then and you don't have to pay to go in to go see those. And then you can also get bonus points if you're doing an adventure by looking for her sculpture in the Japanese tea garden. And there's some little frogs hiding around this sculpture. B is for bison. These gigantic beasts, also called buffalo, have lived in the park for more than 100 years. In 1924, 25 sneaky bison escaped in the middle of the night and surprised people living in the nearby Richmond and Sunset neighborhoods. That's where I live in the Sunset. So bison. Bison were brought to the park as part of its Wild West feel in 1891. And then a baby bison was born in 1892 and the breeding program ended up being really successful. 500 bison calves have been born in Golden Gate Park over the years. And it actually helped keep bison from extinction. It was part of um, helping grow the populations around the country. Of course, there are now five yearlings that were recently added to the park. Very cute. C is for concrete slides. Grab some cardboard and ride the slides. These concrete chutes were built in the 1970s in what's now the Corret Children's Quarter, one of the oldest public playgrounds in America. And Phil Ginsburg did say the oldest. So you can add sand for more speed the next time you ride these. This is also a classic San Francisco experience because you'll find some concrete slides like these hidden in different hilly neighborhoods around the city. And that's my daughter on the right taking her first ever ride on the concrete slide. This is a important rite of passage for every San Francisco kid. When the Corret Children's Quarter opened in 1888, the idea of building a place just for kids to play was a very new idea. And in fact, it is thought that this was the very first public playground in the country. No concrete slides back then, but lots of fun things to play on. And you see there were donkey carriage rides and even performing elephants. D is for Dahlia. There are so many flowers in the park. It's hard to believe that it was, the land was just once a bunch of sand dunes. One of the best flower spots is Dahlia Garden, which bursts with eye-popping blooms of San Francisco's official flower. Here are some of them. So beautiful. Dahlias were made the official flower of San Francisco because they are the very symbol of San Francisco life and of the spirit of her people, thanks to their beauty and diversity. I love them. And they're going to be coming into bloom soon by early June. So keep that in mind. E is for ecosystems. From a mountaintop cloud forest in the botanical garden to an underwater coral reef in the California Academy of Sciences, you can travel to some of the most extraordinary ecosystems in the world without ever leaving the park. When you, for example, go to the coral reef at the California Academy of Sciences, you're in the Philippines. And then if you had to see these very rare wax palms with striped trunks in the botanical garden, you're visiting the cloud forest of the Andes Mountains. The park is also home to its own native ecosystems, scrub, dune, and woodland. And there's even an old growth forest of coast live oaks. Definitely go check out the Phil Arnold Trail to see these. It's amazing. F is for fairy doors. Look for fairy doors in hidden spots throughout the park. Leave something from nature, an acorn or a shiny stone, as a gift for the park's most magical residents. We love looking for fairies and fairy doors in Golden Gate Park. And my two favorite spots are in the music concourse and in the fallen log behind the Japanese tea garden. But the park is 1,017 acres. So who knows how many more fairy doors there are. G is for grizzly bear. It's true, a famous grizzly bear named Monarch once lived in the park. Monarch tried to escape more than once, but unlike the bison, he wasn't successful. He was the model for the bear you see on today's California state flag. And of course, you already met Monarch earlier today in our adventure. Now, Monarch lived in the park from 1894 to 1911 in an enclosure that was at the far end of what's now the AIDS Memorial Grove. He had a mate and two cubs during this time too. H is for Hippie Hill. Right on, man. This slope overlooking Robin Williams Meadow was a popular hangout for peace-loving people in the 1960s. 
Stop by today and you might see drummers, dancers, and even a few tie-dye shirts. So Hippie Hill became a hangout during the 1967 Summer of Love and Robin Williams Meadow sits beside it. And this was named in honor of the comedian who got his start in San Francisco and performed at Golden Gate Park's very first comedy day. I is for incredible views. Want to see the glimmering Pacific, shimmering skyscrapers and the Golden Gate Bridge? Head to the park's best lookouts, Strawberry Hill, the living roof at the California Academy of Sciences and the Hammond Observation Tower in the De Young Museum. This really is one of my favorite spots. If you've never been to the Hammond Observation Tower in the De Young, it's a must. And of course, you'll see Ruth Asawa's baskets on the way. And of course, someday we're gonna have a really incredible view from the Sky Star. J is for jam sessions. From fiddlers at the Hardly Strictly Bluegrass Festival to jazz players in the tunnels, some serious jamming happens here. Music has been part of the park since its creation. The Golden Gate Park Band has played here since 1882. Of course, a lot of famous musicians have played in Golden Gate Park, from Paul McCartney at Outside Lands to opera legend Luciano Pavarotti. And then that tunnel you see there that I mentioned in the book um, is known as the Conservatory of Music. It's right next to the Conservatory of Flowers because so many excellent musicians play there. K is for Carl the Fog. Fog is such a big part of San Francisco that it has a name, Carl. And Carl loves the park. When you have a birthday party in the park, Carl often blows out your candles before you can. This has happened to my kids more than once. Here comes Carl, check it out, covering the park. Now, what's the story behind Carl? Well, in 2010, a mysterious account appeared on Twitter for San Francisco's fog called Carl the Fog. And just like the fog, the name stuck around. Carl even wrote his own book. L is for lawn bowling. Decked in white from head to toe, people have been lawn bowling here since 1901. And you can still enjoy other sports from Victorian times too, like fly casting and archery. Fly casting goes way back in the park, but it recently made history in a new way. This girl here, Maxine McCormick, learned to fly fish at the fly casting pools in Golden Gate Park when she was just nine years old. Then when she was just 12 years old, she became the youngest ever gold medal winner of the world championship of fly casting. Pretty incredible. So maybe you wanna go start learning fly casting. M is for monastery stones. William Randolph Hearst had plans for a castle so grand that he shipped thousands of ancient monastery stones from Spain to build it. But he ran out of cash and his plans crumbled. Today, you'll find the stones scattered around the park. This is one of my all-time favorite things about Golden Gate Park. So interesting. And what you see here are the plans, the actual plans for William Randolph Hearst's second castle, which was going to be made using the stones from a medieval Spanish monastery. He had all those stones shipped to San Francisco in 11 ships. That's how many ships it took to get them here. But Hearst ran out of money before architects could finish a design. And eventually he gifted these stones to San Francisco. Then in the 1940s, a plan emerged to take all of those stones and rebuild the monastery in Golden Gate Park to make it a medieval museum. This is where it was going to be. This is close to the De Young. So the crates of stones were moved into Golden Gate Park at this time. But a series of fires made it impossible eventually to put the monastery together. So didn't happen. And instead, these stones have just really, truly ended up scattered all over the park. You will find them in a lot of spots around Stowe Lake and in the Japanese Tea Garden and lots and lots in the Botanical Garden. And I also have a one mile loop of a scavenger hunt for monastery stones on my website that you can do. They're really cool. And once you know what they look like, you start seeing them all over the place. N is for nesting herons. At Stowe Lake in spring, look for great blue heron nests and chicks atop the trees of Heron Island. You can see herons in the park year round, plus red-tailed hawks, Anna's hummingbirds, Stellar's jays, red-winged blackbirds, and many others. These are the chicks, so cute. This photo is from just last week. And great blue herons began nesting at Stowe Lake in 1993. And in the years since, more than 200 chicks have fledged here. So get to Stowe Lake as soon as you can 
And you might also want to get over to the bison paddock because nearby are great horned owls, a great horned owl with her little chick here. Too cute. O is for orchid. How many weird and wonderful orchids can you find among the 2,000 plants growing in the Conservatory of Flowers? Hint, some live in trees. While you're there, check if the corpse flower is in bloom for a super stinky surprise. So first, it's fun to just look at this old postcard because the Conservatory of Flowers was built in 1879 and is one of the few Victorian buildings still standing in the park. Pretty amazing. This is the corpse flower that I mentioned in the book. So the Conservatory of Flowers has five of these. Their full name is Amorphophallus titanium. titanium. Behind, they have these behind the scenes. They're taking care of them. And it takes seven to 10 years for a plant to store enough energy to even bloom. And then it's only in bloom for two or three days. And that's when it is very, 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 very smelling. Lots of different things people say it smells like, but they all say it smells horrible. <laughs> P is for pedal boats. Want to pretend you're back in time? and Head to Stowe Lake. Victorian visitors rented boats and did just what we do today. Paddle past Huntington Falls, float under the rustic bridge, and then dock at the boathouse. I love Stowe Lake because you really can feel like you are experiencing the park just like Victorian times. So the islands, the waterfall, the bridges were all built in the 1890s. And you can see from these pictures and these postcards, what are they doing? The same things we do today. And another thing is in Victorian times, that's when it was believed that Stowe Lake was haunted. And this was actually on the front page of the San Francisco Chronicle. Can you believe it? Q is for Queen Wilhelmina Garden. When you plant thousands of tulips next to a Dutch windmill, it makes sense to name it after Dutch monarch Queen Wilhelmina. The Murphy windmill's claim to fame, a local girl once rode one of its sails around 25 times. Now, this was truly one of the craziest things I learned in my research about Golden Gate Park. A girl named Velma Tilden was tied to one of the sails and rode the Murphy windmill around 25 times in 1921. She became very famous for this, and she also won a box of candy for each time she went around. <laughs> Hard to imagine this happening in the year 2020, but pretty fun to think about. R is for roller skaters. Imagine going to the park and seeing 20,000 people on roller skates. That was the roller craze of the 1970s. Today, you can still find roller skaters and bladers grooving at the rink next to JFK Drive called Skate in Place. And one of those might be me or one of my family members. Now, people have been roller skating in the park almost since the very beginning. So if you look at this picture, the track you see there was actually for roller skating. And that just surprised me. I wasn't expecting that to be a thing back then, but it was. But when it really became a thing was in the 70s when it got so popular, some people thought it should be banned with these tens of thousands of roller skaters everywhere. But it wasn't. Thanks to the efforts of David Miles Jr., also known as the godfather of skate, that did not happen. And instead, SF Rec and Park created an official rink in 1985 that we call Skate in Place. And this is one of the most magical places in the park and some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. S is for Shakespeare Garden. Dost thou desire to stop and smell the roses? Then find thy way to this poetic place. Tis filled with flowers and plants from Shakespeare's sonnets and plays. Look for poppies, pansies, and primroses. This is such a beautiful, often passed spot in the park. And this goes back to 1928. It's a fun spot to read quotes by Shakespeare and then look for some of the poetic plants that I've mentioned. T is for tea garden. Climb a moon bridge, hop across stepping stones, and watch colorful koi swim by, all of the Japanese tea garden. And don't forget to taste a fortune cookie at the tea house. After all, they were invented here. So the Japanese tea garden was originally created for the 1894 California Midwinter Fair by Makoto Hajiwara. Makoto is considered by many to be the inventor of the modern fortune cookie, which today are served at Chinese restaurants. Go figure. 
So Makoto started making and serving a savory Japanese fortune cookie in the tea house in the early 1900s. And they were very popular. The tea house couldn't keep up. So he had the Ben Kyoto candy factory start making them. And this is when they got that sweet vanilla flavor that we know today. U is for Uncle John's tree. Named after John McLaren, who ran the park until he was 96, this majestic Monterey Cypress is almost as old as the park itself. Each December, it's decorated with lights to become the park's own Christmas tree. So here is Uncle John's tree in front of McLaren Lodge. And John McLaren lived in that house. It was built for him and his family to live in. And it's very fitting that a tree is named for him because during his life, John McLaren planted two million trees at Golden Gate Park and other parks around the city. I think we all owe a debt of gratitude to him. And he is the ultimate tree lover and tree hugger. Uh, and here's the tree at the tree lighting every, that happens every year. This is a lot of fun. B is for Verdi. Why is the park's giant Giuseppe Verdi statue so hard to find? Because Uncle John hated statues. Whenever one was donated to the park, he planted trees and bushes to hide it. Search for all 30 statues, including one of Uncle John himself. So lots of statues, but John McLaren would have his gardeners hide them. So why? He took this shady approach to statues because he wanted the park to look natural and that did not fit what he thought was a natural looking woodland. So even today, many of these statues are hard to miss and there's more than 30 of them. You can get a list on my website and do a scavenger hunt of your own and check them all off, but I can't believe all these years in the park and I still will stumble on them, ones that I've never seen before. Of course, what do you think John McLaren would think of the statue of John McLaren? W is for waterfalls. A trip to the Sierra Nevada mountains gave John McLaren an idea. Why not add a waterfall to the park? So they created Huntington Falls on Strawberry Hill. Rainbow Falls was added later and you can hike to the top of both. This, I've always loved Huntington Falls. This is definitely one of my favorite spots in the park, but it is even more fun to know that it was inspired by the waterfalls in the Sierra. X is for X chiranthomantodendron lensii. Yep, that's a mouthful. Imagine peeking inside a flower and seeing a monkey's hand waving back at you. Check out this rare blossom with the tongue twister name also called the hybrid monkey hand tree in the botanical garden. So what you see here, uh, if you see the, in the lower right, this red flower is the monkey hand tree, which is easy to find in the botanical garden. But the hybrid monkey hand tree, the yellow flower is gonna be a trickier search, but it's worth it. It's a very amazing flower. Why is for Yacht Club? Ahoy, ye landlubbers, set your sights on Spreckles Lake, where all kinds of miniature vessels, tugboats, sailboats, speedboats, steamboats, sail from March through October. Come cheer on your favorite tiny racer. The San Francisco Model Yacht Club for these little boats was founded in 1898. This goes way back. And the lake you see here, Spreckles Lake, was built specifically for it in 1904. Z is for zebra. Gallop off on a red striped zebra, charge ahead on an armored unicorn, fly away on a sharp toothed sea dragon. You can ride these creatures and more at the historic carousel in the Corret Children's Quarter. I think it's pretty fun to go to the carousel. This is the original carousel that was there. The one you see today arrived in 1941 after being part of the 1939 World's Fair on Treasure Island. So Z is for zebra. Believe it or not, there were also real zebras in the park at one time giving carriage rides. There was no San Francisco Zoo yet, so Golden Gate Park had its own menagerie, which is pretty fun. I can only imagine for the kids. Speaking of kids, those two kids riding the carousel on that last page are indeed my kids, and I will always be grateful to Michael for putting them in the book. All right, our adventure is moving on. Hi, everybody. We are the Thinking Caps from Oakland, California, and we are sending you tons of love. Uh, this is Chris Hikas back here on the bass. This is Andy Coet, who wrote all the songs. And my name is Ruth Buzzy. <laughs>
This song's called A is for Azawa. for bison take one uh, again, bees for bison take two <laughs> hey there have you heard there are bison in the park once in 1924 they snuck out in the dark
delightful Dahlia Dell. Tease for Dahlia, Dahlia Dell, delightful Dahlia Dell. Tease for Dahlia, Dahlia Dell, delightful Dahlia Dell. Golden Gate Park theme song. Take one. One thousand acres of sand was too bland. And so from the people arose a demand. Let's take this grainy and age expanse and My name is Michael and we're going to draw the Conservatory of Flowers today and I have a really easy way of drawing this thing. All you need is a piece of paper, a sketchbook maybe, uh, a pencil. This one's a 6B pencil um, and a eraser maybe. Don't necessarily even need an eraser if you don't want to. And the way that we're going to do this is to break this thing down into simple shapes. And those simple shapes are triangles, circles, although there aren't a lot of circles in this, there's a lot of half circles. See this dome? Pretty much a half circle. And squares or rectangles. Right? Half a square is a rectangle. So we've got all these big, beautiful shapes in this building, you notice that it's basically one big rectangle at the base, a second rectangle stacked on top with some rounded edges, a third rectangle, which is a little bit smaller, which is underneath the dome, which is a half circle, and then this beautiful little filigree at the top. So we're gonna start from the top and work our way down. So let's just get right into it. So 
I want to make sure I leave plenty of room on my page for all the shapes that need to happen. So I'm going to make quick indications of where the filigree goes, where the dome is going to live. So I'm just drawing a, just a really rough half circle. And again, like I can go back and change any of this. Doesn't matter if I feel like I'm getting it wrong. I just draw another line. So here's that rectangle, right? The second rectangle. The third rectangle at the base. I'm not going for exactness here. I feel like drawings are way more interesting when they are done by a human and not by a computer. <laughs> Um, so if it looks like there's a human hand in there, I really like the drawing. So that means making mistakes. So um, it's okay if your drawing doesn't look like mine. It's okay if your drawing doesn't even look like the building. The important thing is just to draw. So let's draw. So I'm just drawing some, some triangles. Again, triangles, circles, and squares, right? drawing some triangles for the top of the building. I'm drawing a half circle for the dome. I'm drawing a rectangle directly underneath the dome. I'm drawing another rectangle here, but I'm going to round off the corners. See how the corners of the rectangle here go whoop, they go down like that? Whoop. So let's do that. I like to keep my photo handy. I keep it close by, but I'm not worried about you know measuring or any of that. Um, there are people who do that really beautifully, but that's not what we're after. Alright, so then in front this bit here, the, the entryway. There is a window up top that kind of lives inside this rectangle here in the very middle. There is a, another window here that is sort of above the, the doorway. And then there's a, another um, awning that looks like a giant triangle sort of behind this one. So let's just break it down into shapes. And you notice there's the this is this is a line perfectly down the middle of the building. So if this is the, the, the center line of the building, you can see that the the windows all line up with the filigree at the top. So that's a good guide just to use for your eye. So triangle square, triangle, let's see, where do you go? Another triangle, like that, another triangle, square, and rectangle here. And there's sort of a window within the window, so I'm already starting to get into detail here, but it's most important when I do a drawing like this to do big shapes first and then do the little shapes. And now I'm looking, I'm actually seeing that the dome is a slightly different shape. So I'm gonna go make, I can go make some adjust, adjustments and erase a little bit. But, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I think your drawing is going to be really beautiful. And I hope you share your drawings with us. Um, I think there is a, a art contest happening through the park that we're going to be involved with. So I really hope you share your drawings with us. I can't wait to see what you draw from the park. 
So see how this line and this line are kind of the same, and this line and this line are kind of the same. So I'm kind of getting more into some detail in the in the roof. And then that line goes that line goes all the way down to the base. So let's follow it down. And there you have it. That's pretty much the whole building. Um, it does go off to the edge here. So let's draw the sides. And then there's some little details over here. Another rectangle, another triangle, another rectangle, another triangle. So I'm gonna speed up the camera but I'm just gonna like sit and draw some of the details here for fun. But this is pretty much the whole building. Just being drawn, just using triangles, circles, and squares. my very long razor sharp claws, I was able to draw the conservatory. Nice work, Monarch. Our A to Z adventure is almost over, but we still have a few more fun things to share with everybody. We've been asking people to send in artwork showing their favorite things in Golden Gate Park. Let's reveal some of those to our A to Z audience now. Michael, I'm to share some of the submissions that we got for our art project and contest. Check these out. F is for fields. T is for tree. B is for butterfly. P is for poppies. H is for horses. B is for bison. Q is for Queen Wilhelmina Tulip Garden. G is for Great Horned Owl. B is for Biking in Golden Gate Park. H is for Hawk. P is for Pine Tree. W is for Windmill. A is for Albino Alligator. B is for buffalo. P is for dog. P is for picnic. G is for golf course. S is for Stowe and Spreckles Lake. B is for butterfly. F is for Ferris wheel. Thanks everybody for sending those in. Well, I have exciting news. We've decided to launch a weekly art contest partnering with the official Golden Gate Park 150th celebration. We'll do one letter each week, starting with A, of course, and SF Rec and Park and the San Francisco Parks Alliance are going to be giving out prizes every single week, like copies of the book and adorable little bison stuffies and cool t-shirts. So you're going to want to submit maybe even every week for every single letter. You can get all the info and send in your art at goldengatepark150.com. I'm looking forward to seeing all of your art. I'm so excited for all the new adventures people are going to have in Golden Gate Park too. You should tell them how to get the book. All right, Monarch. If you want a copy that's signed by Marta and myself, we're partnering with local indie bookstore Green Apple Books for you to get this sent straight to you. And I always draw a special picture in the book. 
You can make a note of who you want to personalize for. Greenapplebooks.com. Our local independent bookstores really need your support right now. And you can get Golden Gate Park and A to Z Adventure through any of them. Or you can also go to bookshop.org, which when you purchase the book through that, it splits the profits between indie, indie bookstores in your area. You should probably give a few copies away to these nice people watching, don't you agree? Great idea, Monarch. You're polite and generous. Send us an email at goldengateparka to z at gmail.com within the next hour, and Monarch here will draw three winners. And after you enter the contest, get out there and enjoy your favorite park and have your own A to Z adventure. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So could you point the way back to the park where we can eat? There's nothing for us here in this deserted city street. The bison are back, the bison are back, the bison are back in the park. And why did they roam away from their home? They said it was just a park. Hi there. Of this new kids' book, Golden Gate Park and A to Z Adventure. The author is Marta Lindsay. It's being released by West Margin Press in May of 2020. Uh, I'm here to wish the park a happy 150th birthday, so come along with me. Happy 150th birthday to the De Young Museum. Do you have a special outfit for your birthday, De Young Museum? Happy 150th birthday to the statue of a sphinx. Statue of a sphinx, I gotta tell you, you're my favorite statue in the whole park. What do you say to that? Strong silent type. Happy 150th birthday to the fairy doors. Happy 150th birthday to the bison of Golden Gate Park. Bison, do you attribute your longevity to your exercise regimen? Happy 150th birthday to the California Academy of Sciences. California Academy of Sciences, do you have a special trip planned for your birthday? Happy 150th birthday to the Monastery Stones. Monastery Stones, <laughs> you don't look a day over 149. What's your secret? Happy 150th birthday to Hippie Hill. Hippie Hill, my question for you, what's your favorite kind of birthday cake? Happy 150th birthday to the giant windmill. Giant windmill, in your time, you've probably seen a lot of changes. Is it the times? Are they changing? Is there something blown through the windmill? So I hope you'll join us on Saturday, May 9th for the book launch of Golden Gate Park and A to Sea Adventure here in lovely Golden Gate Park at the Children's Center by the Carousel. Uh, and there's going to be a parasol giveaway, story time and songs, uh, a little drawing session with yours truly, and some special guests and surprises. So that is, again, Saturday, May 9th, from 9.30 to noon. And uh, we'll see you there. Happy 150th birthday to the Conservatory of Flowers. Conservatory of Flowers, if you are going to San Francisco, is it important to wear a flower in your hair? In Golden Gate Park, Golden Gate Park, just turned 150, Golden Gate Park, Golden Gate Park, everything here is so nifty, everything here is so nifty, everything here is so nifty.